As we look at this right here again, uh, the, the, the common theme that we're going to look at for the first uh, uh, bit this morning is that walking. And it is, uh, As Christian people, we often find ourselves on that treadmill or we often find ourselves on an escalator, if you will. We're, doing a, we're taking a whole lot of steps. We're doing a whole lot of walking, but we are not going anywhere. We're not really accomplishing anything that, that God would, would have us to do. And there's several places that I want us to look at. But before we go there, let's uh, stay focused right here in the book of Ephesians. The fourth chapter it says, I I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Now, what Paul is saying, he's talking to the people who are called specifically or called a, and has a job, whether it be in the church, whether it be uh, 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 any type of ministry that you have. All, all Paul is saying, he said, I, I'm asking that you walk worthy of that, that you carry yourself in a manner in which people can see uh, uh, as we talked to uh, uh, Wednesday night, we've touched on it this morning uh, uh, through uh, it, what MD's opening this morning, that people look at you, people see you, and no matter what, people, uh, if they see bad, the odds are that's all that they're going to see. A bad deed can, uh, a, a moment of weakness, a, a slip up in temptation, all these things can uh, can kind of, uh, uh, that's uh, overwhelm people, that that's, that's exactly what it is that they see in you. They're not, uh, the, 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 your, your, your moment of weakness can kind of uh, blind everybody else's to the whatever works you may have. Uh, but, but staying on, on topic here this morning, I said that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Everybody here is called according to a purpose. You're called according to the purpose of the will of God. I do not know exactly specifically what your vocation, what your job, what your duties, all these things. You know, there's, uh, there's a handful of people here that I can specifically point at and say, I know what you've been called to do thus far. But I can only leave it at that. I can only say thus far. And that's speaking to the deacons of the church, the song leaders, the song, the music people, the Sunday school teachers. I can speak specifically about your job, but every person else, I cannot do that. But we're going to get to your job shortly. Verses 2 and 3 is going to be the second half of what we have in store this morning. So we're going to move on to four. It says there is one body and one spirit, and that spirit is what we're really going to dwell upon. I bet you if we ask all the kids here what the fruit of the spirit is, I bet you they can tell us because they've been learning it. Any of you want to tell me what the fruit of the spirit is? Oh, you don't know it still? Your teachers are slacking. I'm telling you. What are they, Jay? Would it be easier for me and you to get up here and done the song and dance for it? Maybe. But there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. You have one common goal. You have one common hope. You have, we all have one commonality, and that was we're all called by the same person. We all have the same indwelling, if you will, of the same spirit. Amen. Stay with me. There is one Lord, there is one faith, and there is one baptism. That baptism is not talking about this up here. Do not let anybody fool you in what that verse is talking about. There is one baptism, and that's the baptism into the body of Christ. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is the baptism in which we are talking about. There is one God and one Father of all who is above all and through all and in, in, in you all. Understand that. That's going to be very important. Turn with me, if you will. Turn with me over to the book of Colossians. And in Colossians, the very first chapter in the 10th verse, it says this, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord. Are you catching our common theme here? That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. If you are increasing in the knowledge of God... You would be increasingly knowledgeable of whatever job it is that God may have, have, have called you into. But you walk worthy. We 
We'll get there in a minute. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful, fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. In Colossians 2, 6, just turn a page or two, it says, As ye therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Walk in him, walking worthy of him. In 1 Thessalonians 2, 12, it says that you would walk worthy of God who hath called you unto his kingdom of glory. Take these thoughts with what we just read. Walk in his kingdom of glory. Would your normal, everyday activities be acceptable and accepted upon the streets of heaven? Could you take your everyday daily routine, your habits, your conversation, your, your, your demeanor, your attitude, all these things, could we just seriously pluck us up and transplant us and directly onto the streets of glory and could you fit in there without changing anything? Could you fit in? Answer the question honestly to yourself. Can you fit in with the saints upon the streets of glory? Can you tread the streets of gold just as you are at this moment? But we're commanded to walk worthy. We are commanded to walk according to the calling of God. We are commanded, we are told, we are instructed to walk in this very uh, way here. In Ephesians chapter 2 and in the 10th verse, Ephesians 2, 10, we, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, God was kind enough to give us a book. God was kind enough to leave this book here for you and I to read. God was kind enough to write down everything that he desires us to know in this book. Amen. His sole purpose for leaving you this book is so you could learn about his will and his son. Now, there's a lot of extra hidden extras in here that we can find, such as the, uh, the tribulation, the millennial kingdom, the, the, new, the new heaven, the new earth. There's tons of things that we can find, but your sole purpose in reading this is to seek out the Lord. Amen. Seek, and you shall find. Walk worthy and having the fruit of good works. Walk worthy of being able to, to stand in His glory. His glory, not our glory, but His glory. Walking worthy. Now, Christian people, our Christian walk is not a walk on a treadmill. We are not standing still moving our feet. Our Christian walk should be taking us somewhere. And that somewhere should be closer to God. Amen? Amen. If you are walking I believe it's in 1 Peter could be 2 Peter chapter 1 chapter 2 verse 22 I can tell you exactly where it's at on my Bible in my Bible. But God has blazed, his son has blazed the trail for us. We are to follow in his footsteps, not in man's. You're not to follow after the preacher. You're not to follow after the deacons. You're not to follow after anybody else other than his son, Christ Jesus. You will find that in the Bible. It is his footsteps in whom we shall, uh, we shall follow after. Let's change our gears dramatically since we have this thought in your mind that is the dwelling is here that we are walking and we should be walking daily with and walking to please God Almighty. Amen? Are we all on the same page there? Do we need to go back over it? This is participation part of church. Church, 
Amen. Are you with me that we are to walk with God? Okay. Thank you. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, 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 is that plural. Look in your Bible. Is there an S on the end of it? Is that meaning more than one? Everyone that beareth not fruit, it is singular. It is talking about one particular fruit. Amen? In the book of Galatians and in the fifth chapter, this is amazing because I want you to catch this. This is truly spectacular. Put on your seatbelts. We're about to have our minds blown. If you get over here and you begin reading, and in the fifth chapter and the sixteen, you can talk. You can read and learn about the works, plural. There's an S of the flesh, and there's this great big list of things. Understand, did, 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 did the kids tell us more than one fruit of the Spirit? They did, did they not? There was, there was a few there that they named, amen? But our Bible reads and teaches us that it is singular, it is one. Did you ever catch that? But the fruit of the Spirit, it does not say fruits, there is no S. There is no S. It is not a, a multiplicity of things. It is one singular thing that you produce. The fruit. Anybody know what you produce as the fruit of the Spirit? If we Let's read these. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Does anybody know what those things equal? If you add them all up together, what does the fruit of the Spirit equal? Jesus Christ. That is the fruit of the Spirit. Do you want to know what your fruit, do you want to know what you should produce in your daily walk as we walk forward, not backwards, not sideways? Not in a diagonal line, but as we walk forward to the cross, as we walk forward to God, as we walk forward, we should produce Jesus. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit. It's not a multiple, it's not things. We're going to look at the, each one of these individually. They all hinge upon the very first one. Amen. You cannot produce any type, shape, or form of Christ without love. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. You know how many people will read this list and they'll start checking them off. Well, I've got this, and I've got this, and I've got this one. Well, I've got the majority right there, so I'm in pretty good shape. No, you are not. You are not Jesus had each and every one. You can't look at yourself and say, well, I have self-control, but I'm not very faithful. I have self-control, but I'm not very loving. I have self-control, but I'm not very joyous. You can't compare it that way because it is not fruits of the Spirit. It is fruit. Did Jesus not say that you should bear fruit, singular? Not fruits. But he said if you bear the fruit, every branch in me, in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. If you can begin to produce just a little bit of Jesus, God is going to bless you in a manner that you can bring out a lot of Jesus. It is fruit. It is singular. It is only one. Galatians 5, 16, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
Walk worthy of the vocation in which you were called. Walk with God daily. Walk, walk, walk. You can find all these things, but we must be walking in the Spirit because there is but one Lord, there is one Spirit, and there is one baptism. All these are the things. It all hinges upon Christ. I ask you that if we could just uproot ourselves and just seamlessly transplant ourselves upon the streets of glory, would you fit in? If you're walking in the Spirit, absolutely. Because you know what you're going to do when you're on the streets of the glory? You're going to be able to stroll side by side with your Savior. Do you know what you should be doing here in the, in the flesh, here in the, in the physicalness that we are today? You should be strolling side by side with your Savior. You should be walking in the Spirit. Because the Father is above all, and he was, what did I tell you? In all. We, they, the, as lawyers like we think ourselves to be, we have thought that we have found a loophole in the Bible when we say that as much as lies within us to live peaceably with all men. I just told you that the Father is above all and He is in all. So do you have any excuse, any whatsoever, that you can say that you can't live peaceably with all men, that you can say, I just can't like them, that I just can't get over this? Because God the Father is in you, and is there anything in this world that He cannot overcome? Because the Bible teaches us that He has obtained the victory. If you're losing, it's because you desire to lose. Boy, don't that sound funny. There ain't none of us really want to be a loser, though, is we? If I walked up to you and called you a loser, no doubt you would get offended. You might get mad at me. And what is it that we tell our kids if they're playing something and they keep losing? Well, you have to try harder. You must practice. You must do all these things. If you're not good at math, you must practice at it. You must study. You must work at it. Amen? If you're losing your battles, it's because you choose to. If you're losing your battles, it's because you're not practicing enough. You're not studying enough. And you are definitely walking with the wrong people. Because if you're walking with your Savior, there is nothing in this world that He cannot defeat. Period. This I say then, walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the Flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. You cannot do what comes natural to you. You cannot act impulsively and think that you can just get by. You can't just be yourself. Well, God said he, 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 he died just as I am, and just as I am, he called me. You are exactly right. And just as you are, the Spirit will change you. Just as you are. Just as you are, it will be just as you're going to be. Just as God desires you to be. God desires you to be fruitful. He desires you to be obedient. He desires you to be faithful. He desires you to be loving. He desires you to be uh, uh, peaceful. He desires you to be thankful. All these things is what God desires you to be. And just as you are, he can do that. If you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. We don't need to read them. We know what the works of the flesh are, do we not? The works of the flesh is us being people and doing what we want to do. But the fruit... The fruit, we said works of the flesh versus the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. 
Anybody here spiritual people? Now that can that can make some uh, interesting conversations, can it not? Are we spiritual? Now, to some uh, 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 hippie-like people, that spiritual may be the thing, the spirit of the, the wind, the trees, the forest, all these different kind of spirits. Hey, there ain't but one spirit, church. Amen. Don't you ever let anybody convince you otherwise. There ain't a spirit of the water. There ain't a spirit of the forest. There ain't a spirit of the wind. All these things, there is only but one spirit. If we live in the spirit, if we choose to be spiritual people, are we religious people? Are we church going people? Are we faithful people? Are we all these things? Well, here is your checklist. This is uh, all these things you must be able to check off before you can claim to be a spiritual person. Hey, let's just jerk on our pride strings here a minute this morning. You guys want to do that? We all got pride. That's one another thing we all have in common. Let's pull on our pride strings. How many of us would honestly say that we do or have done good works? Let's be honest with each other for a minute, church. I'm being serious. At some point in your life, you ought to know whether or not you got rewards waiting on you in heaven. I'm not trying to get you to be cocky or boastful or prideful. I'm being honest with you. The Bible is written so you can know. Do you have anything waiting on you? Do you have rewards? Are you achieving crowns? Well, I kind of think you just get one for getting there. Are you going to have more than one? It's hard to have more than one unless you just have one fruit. And that fruit being Jesus. Jesus took a whole lot of just one thing and multiplied it into more, did he not? The fruit of the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Now that sounds more like the common church house. Amen? I'm not the only person who's went to church for the uh, majority of my life. Desirous of vain glory. You know a lot of Christians do things so they can be recognized. That is part of the plural works of the flesh. Has nothing to do with your fruit. Being envious. Well, I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. Yeah, I might be able to produce more fruits if I had a job. If I could be a preacher. If I could be a deacon. If I could be this. Don't be envious of anybody's calling. Amen. Believe me, if you want to be the preacher, if it's up to me, I'll let you do it. You can have that job. I'll trade with you. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Let us not puff ourselves up. Let us not be uh, 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 wanting to get ourselves praised and get ourselves in a position of spotlight. Provoking one another. This is work of the flesh. Now, I'm not talking about just kind of being mischievous and picking at one another. I'm talking about doing this stuff to purposely make people mad. Fueling their fire, if you will. Because you might be able to see envy you might be able to see vainglory in people just because we can see this hey this is not a gift given by God this is not one of your many talents that God may have given you so don't poke that bear it says bear ye one another's burdens is what our Bible teaches us if we live in the spirit let us walk in the spirit would any of us even claim that we live in the spirit oh let's think about it what makes us tick what is it that we live for do you live solely to be able to read and study your bible do you live to be able to pray and speak unto your Lord as much as possible? Do you live to, to, to be able to see someone that you might even just think that they have a burden and pray for them within your heart or within your mind at that very time? Do you do those things? You might not live in the Spirit. 
Do you live? Do you wake up thriving with your uh, the, 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 the very uh, 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 heart within you that the only reason it beats is because it desires to come to the Lord's house and to praise and to worship? Does that happen? From the looks of the crowd, I'm going to say probably not. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit now. We have read this our whole lives and we have changed. We, we've got that verse all mixed up in our mind. We've got this whole chapter mixed up in our mind. We think if we walk somewhat in the Spirit, then that means we're going to live in the Spirit. Because this is fruits of the Spirit. This is all the fruits. And we can, uh, we, we can uh, uh, falsify our fruits, if you will. We can make ourselves think that we're joyous, that we're peaceable, and all these different things. But they are one. They're not separate. Stay with me, church. This is not that hard. I'm not throwing you something that should be way over your head. The fruit of the Spirit. This is what the Spirit produces. The Spirit produces Christ. You can take your pen or a marker, whatever you have, and you can mark all those things out and you can just write Christ. Because Christ is what it shall produce. If you want to know who Christ is, Christ was love. Christ came in peace. Christ was long-suffering. God is long-suffering. If you don't think God is long-suffering, then why, Christian, are you still here doing the same things that you've been doing for your entire life? God is gentle. If God wasn't gentle, we'd all be beat down. God is faithful unto us. He is yet to take one of the promises that he has given us. Over 3,000 promises that you'll find cover to cover here. He is yet to pull one of those away and say, well, you know what? I'm sick and tired of you. I'll take this one back. And he has always been meek. He has always had a still small voice. But you think of the almighty, the great I am, the I am that I am. You talk about a loud and thunderous noise that could be. So holy that our eyes, our mortal eyes cannot behold his glory. We cannot behold his image. And you think of the sound that could be produced from that. God is the very definition of humbleness. You think of the great and mighty. All that he could do. And then he lets us just be wicked. He lets us, quote unquote, play church. He lets us, quote unquote, play husband and wife. He lets us play mom and dad. When we get serious with God, then we can be serious about whatever else we have. But if we're not serious with our walk, if we're not serious about walking with God daily, if we're not serious about walking in the Spirit, we need not concern ourselves with living in the Spirit. We are his workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus. You want to know what your purpose is? Your purpose is to do exactly as Christ done. Your purpose is to have compassion upon the sick. Have compassion upon the lost. Your sole purpose should be to seek You can't do the saving, but you can do the seeking to seek the lost, to lead the lost to Jesus. That being said, church, can you lead anybody that you can't see where you're going? Answer me, church. Can you lead someone if you can't yourself see where it is that you're going? If you are not walking close enough in the Spirit, if you are not walking with God, how on earth do you plan on leading someone there? We can use this whole thing. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Can't lead a horse to water if you don't know where it's at.
We are his workmanship. We were created in his image. Furthermore, you get into the, to the book of Genesis, you're going to find that man was created in our more than one image. Unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk of them. You want to learn about the fruit of the Spirit, you come back to nine. As of right now, all I can tell you is that we are to walk with God. We are not to walk hand in hand with man. We're not to walk with uh, uh, the, the things of the, 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 the world. We're not to, it's not even instructed for us, church, to walk with burdens upon our shoulders. You understand that, that in any time that we can recognize that there is something wrong, we are to take it right then unto the Lord. We're not to even carry that on our walk. Otherwise, we're on our treadmill and we are walking. And we are walking, and we've walked for miles and miles and miles, and we ain't went nowhere. Your, your, your uh, 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 unconfessed sin is holding you back. Your burdens, your worries, your, 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 your hatred, your grudges, your, all these things prohibit you from moving forward. And you understand that the Bible says, draw nigh unto the Lord. And he will draw nigh unto you. But if all these things are holding us down, if we are refusing to uh, move towards him, and for those of us who know to do right and doeth it not, to them it is sin, amen? If we know these things, we are still sinning. We are getting further apart. And we are to walk with him. Walk worthy. We are created in him for him. 